Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's day three coverage of Boomi World. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Been a great event digging into all the future advances of platform as a service, integration, AI, and we're here with Allison, the CMO, Allison Bean. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So this is your show. Congratulations, it's been a big you. show. Um, really interesting conversations we're hearing in the hallway. A lot of customers, and everyone's kind of like huddling. They're like talking. They're like, that's just browsing. They're like engaged in a big way. Um, uh, it's a hot area, and you guys are like, killing it with AI. Tell us a little bit what's going on in the event. Give us quick highlights and we'll dig in. Yeah, um, you know, for those folks who heard, you know, this is the first time we've had this event since 2019 and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, including COVID. But we're so excited to have our customers and our partners and our ecosystem back together. And I think the thing that we are probably most thrilled about here is the kind of engagement that we're getting across the various groups that are here. So for example, before we even started the main stage yesterday, we had over 300 partners participate in a partner summit. We had almost 200 customers do pre-conference training. We stood back up our partner advisory board, our technical advisory board. This event represents so much more than just an opportunity to tell people the new things that are happening. It's an opportunity to get everybody back together and give us an opportunity to engage in ways we haven't been able to for a long time. And for us, it's just part of the momentum that we're building in the market around Boomi. Um, great keynote, CEO Steve Lucas, uh, okay, well known in the industry. He's excited. I mean, he was on the Cube yesterday, he's coming on again today, we'll dig into it more, but he thinks, and we agree, this is a pivotal time in our industry. If you look at the inflection point and kind of the impact, it's a disruptive enabler. It's not just a classic platform enablement opportunity. This major disruption happening in a good way means yes. data is driving it. It turns out Boomi's actually in a perfect position because guys have been grinding and doing the work on the hard stuff. And now with AI coming in, all the customers are like, we love where this is going because we have real things we could work on. I mean, that's got to be incredible momentum. And then you say, okay, now where do you go from here? What's the, what's the next step? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've known Steve for a long time and, and obviously, you know, he has incredible vision and understanding of the market. And I think, you know, the, the couple things I would call out. So first of all, much of what you saw yesterday, the, the sort of whiteboard, the vision for Boomi, some of it we do today, some of it we are announcing here, some of it will be happening in the future. You know, that really came from Steve. He understands so well what we do, what we are capable of doing, where the market and technology is, but also because he speaks to customers so much. Yeah. He understands the challenges they're facing and the opportunities. And we absolutely believe we're uniquely positioned um, because of what's happening in market and technology, because of that hard work that we've done in the past, to be a major player as all of these things move forward. AI, uh, you know, the data management, the agents, uh, you know, the API management, we're super excited about what the future holds for us and our customers. So on the market side, let's go to the market a little bit and, and explain to the vision of how you see it playing out because I, the, uh, the integration platform as a service business is still growing at 35% a year. Percent. Up until probably for the next 10 years. That market by itself is good. But then you have this whole other market emerging around the generative AI piece, which you guys were kind of talking about with the platform and with the M&A activity and the organic growth on the product side. It seems to be a bigger, wider market opportunity. Absolutely. Can you share how you guys see that? And, and, and you're being um, not aggressive either. You're actually taking your time. You're actually looking at this and, and, and methodically saying, okay, we have real use cases today Absolutely. in iPass. But then you get the generative AI hype coming in. How do you guys connect that dots for customers? Yeah, well, maybe let me take a step back for a minute and sort of explain from our perspective, you know, how we got here sort of beyond the technology, right? So I was at SAP for a long time. Steve's been a lot of different places. One of the things that we've seen over the last three, five, 10 years with the explosion of cloud computing and this incredible proliferation of applications, you hear a lot about the message of digital transformation and the pressure that's on companies. But as Steve said yesterday, one of the outcomes, unintended consequences of all of this has been complexity. Everybody has bought more stuff. Yeah. The lines of business like, like CMOs are buying technology and applications to solve their problems. But you take a minute and you say, oh, wait, all of this doesn't talk to each other. All of this doesn't work together. Mm -hmm. So at its core, integration, iPaaS, will continue to be an absolute critical piece of functionality, of, mm -hmm. of a strategy that customers have to have, and we will continue to play there. But then you look out and you say, what do some of the new technology advances bring? And obviously Gen AI is the main thing at this point, um, but it brings opportunity to build on the foundation we already have and equip our customers to take advantage of what the technology can do 
without introducing more complexity, right? What you want to be able to do is allow the agents and the AI capabilities to talk to the data and the information you already have. And that's what this is going to help us do for our customers and our partners moving forward. You know, that's that, that point about making things easier around uh, abstracting away the complexity is a huge point. And the old enterprise model was solve complexity by adding more complexity and lock in 100%. the customers. And, but that's, you can't do that anymore because the, everyone wants faster acceleration with the, the data, right? So you start to see the application market really morph into, okay, we have to, it's integration everywhere. You got, and this is why I like this API moves you guys are making because you've had API management before, but now you have leadership coming in and looking at API sprawl as a feature, not a bug, meaning right. that's just how the internet is now. It's 85% mm -hmm. of the traffic's running through APIs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what does that mean? That means everything's going through there, data, foundation models. So APIs will be the most important connective tissue that's one that. for data. Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, again, I'm, I'm not a wildly technical person, but I'll say for us, it comes back down to these are the enabling technologies that yeah. ultimately allow you to take advantage of the data you already have. But perhaps the most important thing when you think about the data is, you know, again, that single source of, source of truth. There's so many things we've been talking about for decades that really come into the fore now. Yeah. But for the first time ever, the technology actually allows us to deliver on the promise right? Single source of truth, having your data in one place, knowing that what you're reporting on and talking about is trusted. And then you layer on top the power of the APIs and you layer on top the power of the AI pieces. And suddenly you can get insight and information and action that would have taken you time and people, resources and money. And you can do it in the blink of an eye. Well, you you must have a very interesting, fun job. I mean, it's busy. You're going to hear on the on stage today about connectors, connective uh, AI around connectivity, mm -hmm. meaning connecting, automating old school connectors. Which Steve kind of made a joke yesterday on stage about marketing automation, a little bit of a, a inside baseball kind of joke because he used to work at Marketo, yeah. marketing automation job. But but he brings this point. He's kind of he's kind of serious in the sense that things like connectors is old and static and like kind of broken and hard. Who's Who's building them? Are they obsolete? So this idea of agents managing all these little connective pieces is going to um, create frictionless communication. It's going to be a really big deal. This is kind of a nuanced point. How important is that? Because even on the marketing side, you guys have marketing systems, marketing tech. Um, this idea of connecting data in real time is going to have to be worked on. This is where I think the agents, it's just one example. Yeah, I guess I would answer you in two ways, right? I do think it's critically important that we meet our customers where they are. And not everybody is yeah. going to be all the way on the front end of what the AI you know, agents and capabilities give you. And Steve talked a lot about the, the built-in ability to reason that will become part of applications in the future. And this is one of the things AI delivers. And that's critically important. But we also know, and, and we are a perfect example of this, that you do have to have those connections between your systems. And you know, hopefully this came through with what Steve was talking about. We don't think that the core integration and automation market, the iPass piece, is going away. We think this continues to be critically important for our customers. And it's very, very important that folks understand that um, everybody will be at a different stage of the life cycle for this. The, the goal for us is to be able to meet them where they are and provide for them the solutions. If they're, if they're far out into the AI world, we're going to have things for them. If they're staying in the core integration and automation, we'll have things for them and we will grow with them as they need that. Well, we agree with you. Our Cube Research Team, we, our thesis is, is that the iPaaS market is going to be the market because it, I won't say niche in the sense that what it was and what it becomes is different because if you think what it is, it's just basically connecting applications to IT infrastructure. That's all it is. Then it's got observability, it's got data. So, I mean, that's what everything will do. So it's not like it's a like category anymore. I mean, I know Garden has a magic quadrant. You guys are number one in it and then doing great, but that's kind of like how applications are going to work. And hence the observability, hence the governance focus here got my attention because I think those two market areas are gonna, are gonna the script will flip because every app will have its our own observability of its own governance mm -hmm. needs. So it's not like one product works. It's that you're gonna need a lot of platform uh yeah, and I, yeah. look, I think that's one of the reasons we're here and we're so yeah. excited to be here. You know, Steve joined just a little bit before I did last year, and we really see the space that we're in as um, absolutely critical yeah. to where the market is going. Without it, 
you know, all of these things are going to are going to not only exist independently, but we're going to make the sprawl worse, right? We're going to make the various elements of, you know, applications worse. And so we think we're in an incredibly fortunate spot, um, both in terms of the capabilities of our technology, um, the fact that we're independent and agnostic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can connect everyone and, and everything, and uh, and we think that's a great place to be. What's interesting, we were talking about the analysts yesterday, we were doing an analyst sex, uh, analysis section on theCUBE, and it's interesting because you guys play well with everyone. Hyperscalers love you because you bring more compute to their ecosystem, yet your customers want to leverage the cloud, but you all don't have to rely on the cloud because you're partnering with them. Absolutely. You can be on premise, you can be on the edge, so you guys kind of play well in, in all the, the different sandboxes, so to speak. So as a marketer, you have to tell this story. So you're going to be growing in this massive market opportunity um, and you have a customer base that's very loyal. I mean, I mean I've been covering Bloomberg for about six years now and, and there's a consistent theme. You have like hardcore loyalists and, we do. And as customers. They love the product as it was and it's still going to get better. You got the M&A going on. You got the story about growth there with the uh, modernization there. So as you guys go to the next level, you got a platform. You talked about the enterprise platform. You got to have an ecosystem. So you've got a lot of moving parts. So as you look at pulling this together to tell the boomy story, you got to have the robust ecosystem, you got to have the platform leadership on the product side, you got to have the organic and inorganic growth. Yeah. Kind of it's all clicking together. So as you zoom out as the CMO, you got to, okay, what's the story? If you had to sum up the story uh, uh, for your customers, where you want to be, can you share your North Star and how you're thinking about it? Because it's a, it's a growth story. It's a product leadership story. It's a transformational story. It's an AI story. I mean, it's a little bit of everything so, for everyone. So take us through your how you're thinking about this. Yeah, I mean, I think the easiest way to to think about it, and and this is part of what Steve talked about yesterday, right? Is is as a customer or a potential customer, you don't have to go ten different places to solve these problems, right? You can come and work within the Boomi Enterprise platform. You can solve your core integration and automate, automation needs. You can take advantage of the API management as well as the innovation that's happening on the AI side and do it all within a single platform. And again, as I said, you know, we'll meet you where you are, right? We have um, incredibly loyal customers, as you said. We also have customers of all shapes and sizes across the entire world. And so our, one of our core messages is, um, you know, one, once you're using Boomi, you love it, right? Yeah. Two, we are growing and innovating with and for you. And three, when you look at the platform strategy of the future, you're going to be able to do things within your Boomi ecosystem, within your Boomi footprint, that allow you to simplify and automate and reduce some of that complexity. And that's really important for customers as they move forward. People don't want to add more complexity while they're solving new and you know emerging business problems. And I think our ability to take that simplification, to deliver it through a single enterprise platform is really going to be critical going forward. And we have to tell the story, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you had a great story. Well, one of the things we noticed also is that because you have a lot of use cases within your customer base, you have a unique perspective to look at the patterns. And, and we heard yesterday from Ann, who's on theCUBE, who also gave the great demos, is that you get great feedback velocity on, on, on products. Amazon had the web services had that same dynamic where they could see things early and release products faster that were more on more relevant. That's a unique point. It's not well talked about, but that's a competitive advantage uh, for you guys. It's a huge deal, and the customers get better products. Yeah, they do. And a big thing, and you see this through Boomi, uh, our Boomi AI, our product now. Um, you know, our ability to see where the connections are being made, yes. what are the most popular and critical connections is one part of the story, but as Anne probably talked about, we actually can look and say, are all, is your you know, connection landscape healthy? Do you have things that are broken or not optimized? Can you fix them? Um, you know, building documentation, all those kinds of things. They give us an opportunity to take what we know our customers are doing make sure they're doing it in the best possible way, and then also make it easier for them to repeat it as they you know, expand their, their landscape. As you guys look at this event, what's next? What do you guys look to do next? Obviously, great successful event here, great online numbers. I saw some on the keynotes, yeah. although you couldn't do the stream for Deion Sanders because it's probably the, his agent and all that good stuff. Deion Sanders was, got great reviews, uh, controversial, of course, um, 
primetime is awesome. So true to his brand. True to his brand. <laughs> He's good. So so as you're successful here, what's next? What's are you guys going to take it on the road? Um, what are you going to do from from a marketing standpoint? Yeah. So we will uh, we will continue with the concept of Boomi World Tours in the fall. You will see us in Europe. You will see us in Australia, and you know, in, in other locations throughout the world. And the goal, obviously, is to make sure that we're in a position to connect with our partners and customers, um, not just you know in this one event through the year, but obviously throughout the year. The other thing that's going to be really critical for us is going to the other places our customers are, other events, engaging with analysts. You've seen the Gartner results. We've had great results from Nucleus recently. It's really important that we continue to tell the Boomi story and articulate our leadership and our innovation. And I think part of what you're he seeing and hearing and the energy you're feeling here is a reaction to an incredibly good story, um, an incredibly good relationship we have, but it's also a reaction to the fact that people are thrilled to be hearing from us again. <laughs> and you know, you just feel the energy and the vibe here, and, and we are so committed to keeping up those engagements in person, online, with our customers, prospects, partners. We're going to hold a Europe European Partner Summit in the fall. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be everywhere, and we're so excited. You know, we've seen a lot of success with the ecosystem. When done right, it's a real power dynamic because you guys saw demos things like the Agent Garden, for instance. When you start seeing uh, partners have the ability to get distribution of their solutions, it feeds into the flywheel of what platforms are supposed to do. And secondly, you guys also have a good community. Like, the community is solid. So what's your... A vision on the community. We're getting great feedback on the videos. We're seeing some great conversations in the hallways. You got a built-in community. I mean, we're talking to Nature Fresh Farms just so the customers like, yeah, we solved the problem manually. It was grind. It was causing all kinds of problems. They solved that. And then boom, we started spreading internally. So you, so you got stories like that. You got a great community. What's How are you going to harness that? Because if you overplay your community hand, that, that could also... It's a nurturing thing. Communities are very Absolutely. important. So how do you see the community factoring into the ecosystem? Yeah, I don't know if you've talked to Chris Timmerman, who leads our community. We, we um, value our community so much. And I think the point you just made is critically important. The point and strategy of our community is to engage with them and to help them understand not only how to use the Boomi products, but to get feedback from them. Um, I don't view um, the community as somewhere we're going to suddenly you know, go in and market to, if yeah, you will. Yeah. It's a place that we want to engage and grow. We have over 250,000 members. We had a bunch of people do pre-conference training. I think that it's, um, it's, it's an opportunity for us to really grow that engagement, but also to your yeah. point, introduce those ecosystem opportunities. Our partners are going to bring, and Vianna is a great example, they're going to bring um, you know, solutions and part, part of solutions that will help us go into um, yeah. lines of business. They're gonna help us go into industries. And so our partners will be critical to that, but our community yeah. is the voice that's going to tell us where is the greatest need, yeah. where are the opportunities of the future, what problems yeah. do they need us to help them solve, and we are absolutely going to build and nurture that community. Well, you guys have a great success. Well, congratulations to the team and bringing in more, more talent uh, on the M&A side as well. You, know, you see companies that have been successful all start out this way. They have the same pattern. They have great loyal customers, good product focus, great management team, but then they all of a sudden they grow. Amazon Web Services one, ServiceNow is one, Salesforce. All these companies were huge successes because they had the magical formula of the loyalty of the customers, good community, and they played it well and they used it as an advantage. They didn't try to market to them or, right. or, or be the product. They used them into the, their own system. And I think you guys have a great, great job there. Done a great job and have a great advantage. Uh, so congratulations on that. Appreciate yeah, thank that. you so much. Well, final question as we wrap up. Um, next year when we're at Boomi Worlds 2025, what do you hope to be talking about? Take us through your narrative if you could and shoot the arrow forward. Next year, what, what's the conversation look like? Well, I think it's a combination of things, right? I think it's, first of all, um, you know, showing how we've continued to deliver on the strategy and vision and promise that was talked about here. Yeah. Right. I think we obviously are going to see, you know, more people, more engagement and expansion of our footprint for the things that I talked about, you know, partner conferences, uh, pre-conference training. And then obviously we want to um, keep our customers and partners updated on where we're going next. One thing is certain. As much as we are in the middle of, you know, the AI Big Bang, right, the train is not slowing down. And so we have to both talk about and be committed to delivering on the things we're talking about now. And, you know, yeah. you know, Steve, right, we will be talking yeah. about what we're doing next and what the market opportunity has brought us. And uh, it, it, it will be exciting. Yeah. Of that, I'm certain. And certainly in the AI world, people are going to start looking at real solutions, not just hype and conjecture. 
Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It, it will be the uh, it, it will be the progression of yeah. the technology to the, to how people and businesses yeah. are yeah. actually using it in the in their everyday life, as opposed to yeah. this cool thing that everyone's sort of trying and trying to figure out. Awesome. We appreciate you having the cube here. We'll be following your growth and story. Thanks for coming on the cube and congratulations for a great event. We'll catch up soon. Thank great. Thanks, thanks for having us. Okay, we're here at Boomerang, John, for your host. We'll be right back after this short break.